advantage of the uh, last time I'm gonna have to use dishwasher in a while. I always like to do that when I'm home and when I can because I hate hand washing dishes. So as you guys can probably tell, I'm still at my home back in Maryland. Been here for a few days, just kind of hanging out, taking advantage of having some regular showers and bathrooms. But today we are hitting the road again, back across the country to San Diego, where if you've been following my channel for a while, you already know this, I'm going to be building out my Japanese mini truck into a camper. But before we hop back in here and hit the road, I'm going to take you guys outside to check out the mini truck because it's actually here. There she is. Ain't she pretty? So everything on this currently is stock other than the two inch lift kit. So I've got a two inch lift kit installed on here, which you can see right here, which will help with a little bit of ground clearance because this thing is four wheel drive. So I plan on taking it off road, doing a bunch of camping trips in it in places where I couldn't make it in the van, at least theoretically got plates on it. Obviously they're covered up, but this is her. She's so beautiful. And over the course of the build, I'm gonna be doing a ton of modifications to this thing, making sure it's roadworthy and able to handle all of the additional weight I'm gonna put in the back here with the camper. So this is kind of the rough layout of the camper. And I'll put an overlay on the screen of the SketchUp that I made of what the inside's gonna look like. But basically this side is gonna be kind of a couch area. At least right now, this is subject, subject to change. And this side is gonna be kind of my kitchen area, gaming area, pantry, and then up here, is gonna be my bet. And it looks like, at least right now, I'll have enough space. And the good thing about these mini trucks is these tailgates fold all the way down on all sides. So that back folds down, this side folds all the way down if it wasn't connected at the back. They all fold down and hang down so you can take them off so I can utilize the entirety of this bed for the build. So for anyone who's curious, the overall dimensions of the bed are around six by six by four by four. It's about four feet, maybe a little bit under from the bed of the cab up to the top. And overall, the height of the camper from the bed to the top will be six foot one. So very excited. But this vehicle is right-hand drive because it's Japanese. So I sit on this side of the car as opposed to that side. And although there isn't a ton of room here in the cab, there is enough for me to fit pretty comfortably. Got decent leg room. I could probably adjust this steering wheel, but it is an automatic. I specifically looked for an automatic, which was extremely hard to find, and apparently they're they're not very common. Most of these old mini trucks you're gonna find are stick, but I didn't think it was a good idea to learn how to drive stick because I don't really know how to drive. I probably could. I've driven them a few times, but I didn't think the best vehicle to learn in would be one where I'm gonna be shifting with the opposite hand, getting used to that, and then having to relearn with my right hand whenever I get back in a normal vehicle, so. It's automatic, working AC, radio, four-wheel drive button up here, and then just the regular dash cluster that you're kind of used to. It is in kilometers per hour, and the top speed of these things is only around 50, 60, completely unloaded, so it'll be interesting to see if this thing can handle any kind of speed with having the camper in the back. This is all kind of an experiment. I don't know if it's going to work. We're gonna do our best. We're gonna use all the most lightweight materials I could possibly find, but I don't know. It might fail and the engine might explode, but it'll be fun to find out. Before we go ahead and get out of here on our cross country trip from Maryland all the way back to San Diego, I figured I'd take you guys on a little test drive. This is an annoying thing though. It does have a backup beep which I think, a reverse beep, which I think I might want to get taken out because it is kind of annoying. And I'll set my phone up here on the dash so you guys can see what kind of speed I'm going in miles per hour because I still don't know the correct conversions for kilometers per hour to miles per hour, so. Well, let's go. There we go, we're up to 40. Not bad, but we're on pretty flat ground. This thing does have manual windows. No power, <laughs> because it is a 1997. For being this old, it's pretty good. I did take it to the mechanic and I got it checked out. Everything seemed to be in good working order. He said there was no major issues with the engine or with anything. The only thing I needed was uh, some new tires, but I actually already bought new tires, so I'm gonna get those put on in San Diego. But yeah, overall, this thing is a blast to drive. And I'm gonna go more in depth for how I acquired this vehicle, all of the paperwork that I needed because it was kind of a pain in order to get it registered because these trucks are pretty much missing every single standard safety feature that you need on a vehicle in order to make it road safe. So there's a couple hoops you gotta jump through in order to get this thing registered, but we already did that, but once I get into my actual truck building series, uh, I'll go more in depth about that and show you guys what I did. All right, make sure she's locked because I am leaving her here and just having her uh, shipped over to San Diego. But yeah, I'm also upgrading the uh, truck, not just the uh, camper. I'm adding airbags, better suspension, and a bunch of other stuff too to hopefully 
help it out with holding all that weight. But before we head out of here, I'm gonna run inside real quick and say goodbye to the dogs. Maverick, goodbye buddy, <gasps> goodbye goose. I'll see you guys soon, okay? So, like I said, I am shipping the mini truck. I was gonna tow it, but I just figured that would make my entire travel across the country 10 times harder because I wouldn't be able to stealth camp. I'd more than likely have to pay for campsites. And I also would have to get a tow hitch installed on the back of the van in order to be able to tow it. So I just opted to ship it, but now we're kind of on a race against the clock to make it back to San Diego before they pick up the truck tomorrow and make it there. So we're gonna have to kind of cook it across the country. And today we're driving a few hours, so I'll see you guys when we get to wherever we're going. We have made it to where we are going to be camping for the night. Lovely shopping center over here. So today we drove just about six and a half hours, passed through three states and made our way almost to Columbus, Ohio. So long day of driving. I am very tired. Didn't make it anywhere pretty <laughs> to camp for the night. <laughs> Unless you think this Walmart parking lot is pretty, which in some ways it is. Got a bathroom got snacks hopefully I am allowed to stay in this parking lot overnight I don't know there is a security car driving around hopefully we don't get kicked out there we go got a spot right here under the light so if you've been following my channel for a while you already know this but I actually do not mind staying in Walmart parking lots pretty much at all over the years I've spent a lot of my time in Walmart parking lots just like this one sometimes when I park in places like this <laughs> it sounds kind of weird but my fun for the day is kind of going inside and uh, just perusing around. So that's what I'm gonna do. And I did find this recipe on TikTok a few days ago. And with the uh, Thanksgiving holiday coming up, I think I'm gonna try it. It's this Thanksgiving sushi that essentially has everything you have from Thanksgiving dinner wrapped into a sushi roll. And it looked really interesting. So I'm gonna see if I can find the stuff to make it in here. Sour cream and chives. So I'm trying to find everything that is on a Thanksgiving table and I've gotten turkeys or mini turkeys, AKA rotisserie chickens, mashed potatoes, stuffing, gravy, and some of this jellied cranberry. I think that might be everything that I would need for these sushi rolls. But yeah, sometimes I like to come back over here to the electronics section and just look at things. I don't know if that's sad or not, but I just walk around Walmart by myself looking at stuff, but it's better than being in the van pretty much for an entire day, driving for six hours and then cooking dinner and falling asleep. At least this way I get out and do something. I do want to get a new monitor for the uh, gaming area in the van. Mine's kind of not the best, but I guess these probably aren't either. You know what, actually, it is winter time and I don't have a warm down blanket. All I have is my sheet and my comforter. I'm gonna get a new blanket for my bed. All right, I've been looking around for like 15 minutes. Haven't found anything else, so we're just gonna go with this one. All right, now I'll be extra warm in my bed. Got my diesel heater fixed. It's all working. And now I've got this nice cozy knit blanket. Nice. So I saw this recipe on TikTok and I thought it was uh, super cool. I'd never seen anything like it before. So I figured I'm leaving soon. Thanksgiving's coming up. I want to cook it. So now I have a reason to. I hope this isn't microwave mac and cheese or microwave, microwave potatoes. Oh, we can make it on the stovetop. Okay, cool. And I think the only things you gotta prep are really these three things. And I got the easiest versions of each to make, so. Usually I make everything from scratch in my van cooking videos, but after driving six hours, I just didn't feel like making stuffing, mashed potatoes, gravy, cranberry jelly, and an entire cooked chicken, so. We bought the easy version because this is probably what most people would do anyways with their Thanksgiving leftovers. But, time to get all those dishes that I washed again. We're gonna try to get this all cooking at the same time. Not the most efficient dish wise, but definitely the quickest. This one, mashed potatoes are super easy. Just plop these in the pot and warm them up. So I think I'm gonna do gravy in here, mashed potatoes in here, stuffing in here. Get this gravy in there, warming up. I don't need too much of that. And we'll probably do just about half of these mashed potatoes. And the stuffing. 
which we need to bring water to a boil for that. One and a half cups of water and some butter. Now we'll just wait for that to come to a boil. All right, our water is boiling. Add in our stuffing mix. And I think we just cooked that for five minutes. I don't know, I already threw the box in the uh, trash can down right there and I'm too lazy to get it out. But five minutes seems about right. And I think our gravy and mashed potatoes are already done. So while we wait for this to finish doing whatever it's doing, I'm gonna prepare up our cranberries, cranberry jellied cranberry sauce. Cause I do have to chop this up to, uh, into little strips so they fit in the sushi roll when I'm done. This stuff is always so cool. Come on. There we go. Ew. Cut a little piece off. And then we'll cut this into uh, little strips. So satisfying to cut. Wow. There we go. You can go back in. I think that's it. I think we're good to go to make some sushi. Unlike regular sushi, which this entire recipe is, unlike regular sushi, we're not using nori as our wrapping paper. We're actually going to use the skins from these chickens. And I got two because I didn't know how much I would need. Not sure if I'm going to use both, but just wanted to make sure that I had enough. I'll leave them in there and just remove the skin off of them as much as I can in one piece. Just like that. That is going to be our wrap. And I think we do need two, so. There we go. Doesn't look the prettiest, but that's fine. We're gonna see the outside of it, not the inside, when we're done. I did get a bamboo sushi roll to make this easier. So I'm gonna get that down. Cover that in some saran wrap. And then we can assemble our sushi, starting with skin number one. And we're gonna overlap these a little bit. Skin number two. Some mashed potatoes in there. Spread it out nice and evenly. And then some stuffing. Some of the rotisserie chicken that we skinned. Some of our cranberry sliver. Throw that right along the center. If I can pick it up, this stuff is so slippery. Some of that in there. And then I'm gonna top that off with another layer of mashed potatoes. And then another thin layer of stuffing. There we go. Should be ready to roll. So essentially we're just gonna take this Roll it up on itself. Use our sushi mat. Make sure that's nice and tight. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. It looks exactly like a sushi roll. There we go. That is a Thanksgiving sushi roll in a van in the back of a Walmart parking lot. I'd be willing to bet that is the first time you've ever seen that. And maybe the first time anyone in the world has ever experienced a Thanksgiving sushi made in the back of the van in a Walmart parking lot. So I am very happy to be here with you all experiencing this at the same time. Moment of truth. How does it slice? I also realized that I think in my last video and this video, I forgot to put on my apron, but this one wasn't too messy. So not too worried about it. Got to break out the fancy knife for this one. Get some nice cuts. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, that looks crazy. Also, we're not done yet. Because if you guys remember, I still do have the gravy, but we're gonna use that kind of as a topping and a binder to uh, get some little crunchy bits to stick to this thing. That was a close one. Almost cut my finger again. There we go. Got a bunch of nice little pieces of Thanksgiving sushi. Let's get them plated, finished, and then let's eat because I'm actually pretty hungry. All right, so I actually cleaned up the van a little bit before I wanted to plate all this up and get it eaten, but. I got my little serving plating dish thing here. Laid up a few of these, the prettiest ones. Beautiful. Bring this over here. And then we can hit this with the finishing touch. Some nice hot gravy right over the top. And this, when I was in the store, was just a last minute audible because I like a little bit of crunch on my regular sushi, so might as well try it on my Thanksgiving sushi. But we got some crispy garlic onions going on top. Scooped up the additional hot gravy for some uh, dipping sauce. This actually looks really pretty too. That looks like a pretty good set of sushi. Like if you didn't tell me otherwise, or I didn't know that this was chicken gravy stuffing and mashed potatoes, I would legitimately think it's just a regular roll of sushi. Let's give it a taste. 
The uh, chicken skin is kind of overwhelming though. It kind of takes away all the flavor. That nice fruity pop from the uh, cranberry is actually pretty good. Not necessarily the most practical, but definitely would be a cool dish that would get people talking if you brought it to Thanksgiving. And honestly, I think it might be a little bit better if you crisped it up in the pan right before or maybe like battered and fried it, but it's not bad. I give this one a 6.1 out of 10 on my rating scale, probably mostly because I used all packaged and store-bought goods and nothing homemade. And I just realized I used one chopstick upside down the entire time I was eating. I've got to wake up early tomorrow because I've got another long day of driving, not doing a video, just kind of driving as much as I can, getting as far as I can west. And then I will pick up with you guys on this road trip in my next video wherever my next spot ends up being. So as always, I appreciate you guys coming with me and hanging out at Walmart and making this weird Thanksgiving sushi. I truly appreciate you guys watching. It means the absolute world to me. I know I say it every single video, but I mean it. I am extremely thankful for you guys, and I hope you guys have a great Thanksgiving holiday, and I will catch you guys next time.